Now the uh, the D seventy D seven thousand versus the D seventy one hundred. The D seven thousand has uh, the uh, general purpose lens or the variable focal length lens is a Nikkor eighteen to seventy millimeter lens. The um, the focal length um, expanse on the D seventy one hundred series camera goes from 18 to 140 millimeters. Um, simply just a more powerful zoom. The, uh, let's start with the basic functionality of the camera itself. So first off, you want to ensure whenever you're doing any exercise with the camera is that the strap is properly secured to the camera. So just hold onto the camera firmly with one hand and just give a little bit of a tug with the, uh, with the other to ensure that the straps are properly affixed. Worst case, is you, if you're wearing the, the camera around your neck and it drops off, it's a whole world of trouble. So anyway, so let's uh, let's look at the the uh, functionality of the camera. So if you invert the camera and have a look at the underside, this is where the the port is, where the battery goes. So first off, ensure that the power is turned to the off position, and then it has a spring-loaded uh, button here that pops and uh, it has a, a hinge to it that uh, uh, opens up the access for the battery. So the battery itself can only go in one way into the camera. There is a visual here uh, to indicate the directionality of it. The contacts on the bottom of the, uh, of, of the battery unit, the lithium battery, will go in first. You simply push it down until it clicks. There's a yellow retaining clip that just pulls it in place, and once it's secured, you can just close the lid. Likewise, to remove it, again, opening the hatch and just touching that uh, yellow uh, retaining button there, and it will release the spring mechanism to allow the battery to uh, eject. So, we'll leave that installed. So the, the uh, SD card, um, the recording uh, uh, device here, um, is um, you can see that the one corner of it is uh, is tapered off and on the reverse side it has the contact points. The port that it goes into is um, by the instructions when I'm referring to that it's as if I'm uh, holding the camera the directionality that it would normally be used. So on the right side the port has these hash marks here that you pull towards you and then it's a spring uh, release that opens up the port. Now there are two, uh, two, uh, two ports for the SD cards and it shows you from one and number two. We're going to use number one and again just follow the instructions. It's got an indicator here with the cutoff corner. You simply want to have it so that as you're holding the camera you should be looking at the, um, the information side with the cutoff corner to the top and to the left. Insert it, just push it in until it clicks. It has a retention and then just close the port. Likewise, to open it, do the reverse, open it up, just touch the, uh, the SD card, push it in slightly, and it will spring uh, to an ejection. If it doesn't go in correctly, there are uh, minute pins that are in there that could technically be, uh, be damaged and cause an extensive repair, so ensure that that's going in uh, appropriately. After having installed the uh, SD card into the, uh, the memory card into the camera, uh, one of the first things that needs to be done in order to synchronize the card with the camera and ensure that all photos are going to be visible, we need to format the card. Now, in most cases, if you take the card out and insert it into a similar model of the same manufactured camera, it's probably not going to be an issue. But certainly if you take the card out and put it into a different camera uh, with different proprietary software, it may not recognize the photos. In fact, you may see the photos show up as you take them, but if the card hasn't been formatted, when you go to review them after the fact, they may not have been saved properly. They may be corrupt files. So in order to actually uh, synchronize it and to reformat the card, uh, once the card has been installed and the battery is installed, Turn the camera to the on position. Hit the menu button on the top left corner and that will illuminate your display screen. 
So you want it in the tool section here, the setup menu, so illuminated the wrench, and you can use this uh, multi-selector to adjust where that, uh, um, which viewing screen is being shown. So you want it on this, uh, manipulate the multi-directional uh, multi indicator uh, to, the, um, uh, to the wrench, and then uh, to the formatting the memory card, hit OK. Uh, our card is in, in slotted in the, into slot one, so hit OK. And adjust your multi-directional, uh, multi-function uh, wheel to get to the yes, and then hit OK, and it resets it. Uh, the downside is, as you could see from the display, once you um, reformat the card, it deletes any images that may have been stored on that memory card prior. So if you are going to uh, uh, reformat the card, ensure that any photos that you need have been saved from the card onto another uh, medium such as your laptop. Now, with the uh, camera themselves, it is an uh, ergonomic style, unfortunately for right-handed people only. So the left-handed people have to just suck it up. So uh, again, just to maintain proper control of the camera, put it around your neck, supporting the camera with your left hand and using this grip, uh, this ergonomic grip here to hold it with the right hand, kind of supporting the camera on the underside with your left hand. And this enables you to rotate the barrel of the camera, uh, the barrel of the lens, uh, which is part of the focusing mechanism or the uh, uh, variable focal length mechanism of the camera, so the zoom function. Okay, I'm going to take this back off because it's easier for me to handle when I'm demonstrating these things. Um, so the, um, the lens itself, let's just uh, look at the removal and uh, reinstallation of the lens. So for our practicality, for most of the uh, practicals that we are going to be using, the general use cam uh, camera lens will be the variable focal length of the 18 to 70 or the 18 to uh, 140 on the D7100 series. To release the, uh, the lens, there is a button on the left side of the camera body. You push that button in, and then rotate the lens while you're holding the button in about a quarter of a turn. You'll notice that on the barrel of the lens, as well as the body of the camera, there are two white dots that appear. That is the uh, insulation and removal location for the lens. And simply just, when it's turned to that quarter of a turn, just turn it and, re uh, and remove the lens. Now, we want to be careful with the with the camera because it's it's much like a if you cut yourself and now you have an open sore or an open wound it's easy to get infected easy to get dirt in it same with the camera body of the uh, of the camera once that lens is removed and now you can see the inner mechanisms of the camera it is uh, vulnerable to to dust to dirt to saliva or precipitation or any element so please make sure that uh, um, it's, it's left with a lens intact. We do have um, uh, lens caps, or there are lens caps, or caps for the body of the, of the, uh, the camera housing, but uh, we don't have them available to you, so just ensure that the, the lens is installed at all times. So to reinstall, you simply just uh, line those two white dots up, making sure that the, the lens is sitting flush and, uh, and nicely flattened against the camera body, and then simply just turn it in a clockwise motion until it clicks. So to release it, hold the button and turn it clock, uh, counterclockwise a quarter of a turn to remove, and reinstalling, aligning the white dots. You don't have to push the button down to reinstall it, and then just turn it clockwise until it clicks that quarter turn. If it has not been installed properly, or if the contacts are dirty, then it, was, it will show a, um, a fault indicator in, the, in your viewing window, which we'll discuss at a later time. 
I'm just going to remove the lens again to, to show you a couple of things in regards to it. You can see that on the, the rim of the, uh, the lens there are a series of uh, contact buttons there. Um, and these little contact points are spring-loaded. The, um, the Nikon camera, like many other manufacturers, is designed so that the lens and the camera body are synchronized, so they speak to one another internally or electronically. So we, we want to make sure that those contacts are kept clean and that uh, there are no issues with, with uh, dirt or uh, that those contacts are not functioning properly. So once the lens is, is installed, I'm just going to demonstrate here that there are two, two rubberized gaskets on the outside of the lens body. So the larger one that's at the, at the front of the lens or towards the front of the lens is your telescoping uh, zoom feature. And it has the indication of what the focal length is marked on that ring as well lined up with the, the white dot that is on the top of the lens. The innermost ring is your focusing ring. And uh, again, that is, uh, depending on what feature or what mode the camera is operating in, will vary whether or not that uh, should or should not be used. Now, affixed to the front of the camera is a lens hood. And you can see that again, there is a white hash mark on the lens and on the hood there is a little white circle. And this is simply just to compensate for uh, the potential of flare or uh, unwanted sunlight coming in angularly into the lens. So depending on the circumstances, if you're doing it, uh, using the camera indoors, there's no necessity to be using this ring but it, it can stay on, it's not necessary to take it off, but to remove it, it's simply just a, a quarter of a turn or until it releases uh, on, a counter, uh, on a clockwise motion, and then just remove it, and the install is the same, just a small turn counterclockwise to reinstall. Um, okay, so as far as the on-off button goes on the camera, this lever here will turn on and off. It's just a, a swivel. So the off position, the on position, when it is turned on, you should see full illumination of the LCD screen on the top of the camera. The other functionality, or the other fun one of the other functions of the camera is the mode dial. So you can adjust um, and prioritize what operation of the camera you want to control. Now, in lecture, we're going to discuss uh, the various uh, options, whether it be a manual control where you are controlling totally the operation of the camera, or in some of the other modes, for instance, the aperture priority, which is signified by the A, uh, you are controlling the aperture or the size of the diaphragm of the camera. The S is the shutter speed, so you can control in shutter priority what the uh, shutter speed of the camera is. And the M is for manual, as we said, uh, where you're controlling both the aperture and the shutter speed. Now, when you're using the priority buttons of the aperture or the shutter speed priorities, the camera will automatically compensate for what it considers to be an appropriate reciprocal one. So if you're setting the aperture, the camera will automatically set the shutter speed. If you decide to use shutter priority and, and adjust the, sh the shutter speed, the camera will compensate with what it considers to be the appropriate aperture. Again, without getting into details, this is simply just to, uh, to give a properly exposed image or what the camera uh, within its li limits uh, will try to accomplish the best possible um, image from uh, exposure from those settings. Um, again, a default to the, the lecture that will cover more of this information. The green, uh, the green uh, indicator here, the auto with, a, with a, a green camera, is a fully automatic position where the camera functionality, you're, you're totally resolving control of the, uh, absolving control of the camera to, uh, to the camera itself. 
where you have no control, the camera will do everything automatically for you. Now the one that I didn't cover in the uh, customized settings is the priority button, or sorry, the program mode. The, the P for program gives you some laterality for some functionality like white balance and, uh, and the, um, uh, the ISO setting and so forth, but um, those are customized balances that you can control, but the camera, again, will prioritize and do what it considers to be uh, the best aperture, the best shutter speed, and so forth uh, on its own. For our initial practical, we are going to be using the auto mo uh, uh, mode of the camera just to get you comfortable using the camera, holding it, uh, and taking photos with the variable focal length lens. It's also to demonstrate the uh, limitations of the camera. So what can be done, whether it be how, how uh, you're trying to, to do a, a very fast image at a low light condition, what, uh, what the camera can and cannot do. So uh, after the initial exercise with the auto mechanism or the auto mode, then we will be using customized, customized settings and we will not be returning back to an automatic mode. The idea behind this is so that you get a, uh, gain a better understanding of the functionality of the camera settings and how to use them and troubleshoot and work through these settings to give yourself uh, the um, maximum uh, knowledge on, on their use and application. Okay. So as far as the, uh, the lens cap goes, and we want to make sure that the, the lens is protected, is uh, the cap has these two little pinch buttons on there, so you just squeeze them together to remove the cap, and then likewise squeeze them and install like that. Uh, please don't put these in your pocket when you remove them from the, uh, the camera. Put them back in the kit because inadvertently someone's going to leave it in their pocket and it's going to disappear in, the, in the, your next laundry wash or whatever else. I'm just going to put that aside for one second. I'm going to remove the the lens hood here and just to show you that there is a protective uh, filter that is on the camera. This is a screw on filter. In this case here it's a, a Tiffin haze filter and what it does is it serves a couple of purposes uh, to start with. It protects the lens in case there is uh, an inadvertent bump or whatever else that if one thing is going to get scratched it's, it's going to be the filter and not be the actual camera lens itself. So the other part of it is to, uh, uh, as, as we will discuss in, in lecture, uh, its purpose is to uh, eliminate the, um, the issues surrounding um, uh, moisture in the air, uh, water droplets, uh, humidity, um, to give you a much clearer image. It, it takes out a lot of the residual um, uh, interference in, in the atmosphere. I'm going to leave the lens hood off for now. Uh, the other thing you can see here, we mentioned this before about the, uh, the variable focal length ring here, and you can see that it either zooms in or zooms out depending on um, the setting here, and as I said before, it's mentioned on the actual uh, ring of the, uh, the barrel of the lens. Um, Again, for our, our first practical, using uh, the camera in a fully automatic mode, we want to make sure that the automatic settings are in place. So on the barrel of the lens itself, it has an autofocus mechanism button here that says M slash A, which is manual and automatic. Pri the priority here is the automatic mode, but it has some manual override. The manual uh, setting is strictly for full operation, manual focusing of the camera. Down here we have this little swivel toggle that has an AF for autofocus and manual. So for our purposes, we want to make sure that that is set at AF for autofocus and um, and for the uh, that the barrel of the lens is marked as the MA setting. When you are doing the, the practical uh, today, um, there is a, an arrow button here that is uh, on the, uh, the top left side of, 
of the camera, and that is a playback mode so that you can see your previous images that you have recorded. We'll talk more about the, the functionality and the display um, um, on subsequent uh, lectures, but that this should get you started uh, to begin with. There is also the ability to have a, as a live view where uh, um, it's almost like a video mode where you actually see the image on the viewing screen, but we, I don't want you using that. I leave that shut off at this time. So you have the option, you should be, uh, you should be looking through the, the viewing window and not through the looking at the screen. Now, the, uh, to compensate for people's variance in their, in their, their, uh, their eyes, uh, the sensitivity, their, uh, um, their image, uh, their, their, their eyesight, there is a, uh, a turn button here that is called a diopter, and it is to the top and to the, to the right of the actual viewing window. And this little dial here, it has a positive and negative, and you simply adjust it uh, while you're looking uh, through the viewing window uh, to compensate for uh, people's variance in their eyesight. This button has absolutely nothing to do with the actual final outcome of the image. If the, if the image is going to look in focus um, uh, from the settings of the camera, it could still look out of focus on this button. It has nothing to do with this. This, this is simply just to, to, um, for variance of your eye in the viewing window. It has nothing to do with the image that's being taken itself. So to, to utilize this to make sure that you are uh, getting the maximum um, focus uh, for your, your eye looking through the viewing window, partially depress the shutter release button here the shutter button. Uh, you don't have to push it till it actually operates the shutter, just basically to wake the camera up. If you just touch it slightly, it starts the functionality of the camera. It, it, it basically wake, wakes it up from a, a sleep mode. As you push that button and look through the, the viewing window, you should see a, uh, a series of letters and numbers and graph along the bottom edge of the viewing window. If that is out of focus, then you can adjust the diopter accordingly. So when the diopter is, when, when the viewing window is in sharp focus for your vision, um, then you have that in the correct position. So just rotate it until your view is that those, those uh, green numbers and letters on the bottom of the screen appear in sharp focus. Now, before we get started on the other contents of the, uh, of the kit, just a couple of other things to, to note uh, here. Um, on the reverse side of the camera here, we talked about the, uh, the, the, the viewing button here. Uh, you can zoom in uh, with the plus and, and minus here once your uh, image is, your previous image shows up in the viewing window and you can uh, zoom in to see whether or not it is in sharp focus or not. Um, be aware that on a smaller screen, um, the focusing is not as uh, important of an issue when you're looking at it here versus on a, on a, on a laptop or a monitor. Uh, and certainly when you zoom in, you'll be able to see any uh, deficiencies or, or, uh, or focusing issues with the camera. Um, the last thing I just want to talk about here with, when it comes to the, uh, to the shooting mode here is you can see uh, you have the mode dial here, which we've talked about already with your manual aperture, uh, shutter, priority, and the auto mechanism here, uh, or functionality. On the outer edge of it, there is another ring that uh, uh, we want that to be lined up with the, the hash mark on the S, which is single shot. The, uh, the C series is for continuous shooting, and there's also a timed uh, exposure uh, setting on there as well, or a timer for the camera. So we, don't, uh, we won't be worrying about that right now. But in order to rotate that dial, there is a button just on the side here. There has to be, uh, it's a release button that allows that, that ring to, uh, to turn freely. 
and then just line it up, make sure it's lined up with the S. Okay, so let's uh, set the camera back into the, uh, the position here for a second. Actually, just before we do that, just one other thing to comment on is please be aware that the camera equipment is very expensive. And um, we, we realize that accidents can happen. Um, hopefully they don't. Uh, but we want people to at least be uh, cognizant of the value of the equipment and to use as much uh, care that they can in, in ensuring that uh, the cameras are looked after and functioning properly. One thing to be aware of is when you are setting the camera down on a, on a surface, make sure that the, that the, um, uh, the strap is, is up on the counter surface as well and not hanging down. Because what invariably will happen is somebody will walk by, brush up against the edge, and pinch the, the uh, strap and the next thing the camera is pulled off of the edge. So just keep it up on the, uh, on the counter surface of wherever you're doing your practicals. I'm just going to set the camera aside for one second and we're going to continue on with the, uh, with the other components of the kit.